We're Group 5 and we're going to be presenting our project on the XYZ Corporation. Uh, group, I'm Aaron and the other members of the group are Jacob and Leonardo. And I'm going to start off by telling you about the three type of variances that we examined in this project. Um, the first variance is the flexible budget variance. And um, <clears throat> that shows the differing levels of revenue and expenses based on the amount of sales activity that actually occurs. Uh, typically, actual revenues um, or actual units are inserted into the flexible budget model and budgeted expenses levels are automatically generated uh, based on formulas that are set as a percentage of sales. And the uh, flexible budget variance is the difference between the results generated by the flexible budget and the actual results. The second type of variance we looked at was the static budget variance. And that's a type of budget that incorporates anticipated values about inputs and outputs that are conceived before the period in question begins. The difference between the actual results and the static budget, and it's most useful when they have highly predictable sales and expenses. The basis for evaluating sales performance, and however, it's not effective in evaluating performance of managers. The final type of variance we looked at was the sales volume variance. Um, the sales volume variance is the difference between the actual and expected number of units sold multiplied by the budgeted price per unit. It's unfavorable when the number of units sold was lower than the budgeted units. Um, the budgeted number of units sold is derived by the sales and marketing managers, um, things that can cause Unfavorable variances are selling price, cannibalization, competition, price, product recall, and trade restrictions. I'm Jacob and I'll be discussing the ratio comparisons. So here we have our actual results with an accounts receivable turnover ratio of 1.66 times a year and an average collection period of 18.63 days. We also have an accounts payable turnover of 2.5 times a year and an average payment period of 12.33 days. Our cash conversion cycle is 13 and a half days. So if we increase collections and decrease disbursements by 5% each, our ratios change up a little bit. Our accounts receivable turnover ratio increases and our average collection period decreases. And with our accounts payable turnover, it decreases to 2.23 times a year and increases the average payment period to 13.87 days. And our cash conversion cycle decreases to 9.84 days. So in turn, if we decrease our collections and increase our disbursements by 5%, our accounts receivable turnover goes down to one 0.4 times a year, and our average collection period increases to 21.4 days, for eight days. Then if we look at our accounts payable, payable turnover ratio, our accounts payable turnover goes up to 2.87 times a year, and our average payment period goes down to 10.79 days. Our cash conversion cycle goes up to 17.9 days. I'm Leonardo and we'll be talking about our suggestions to XYZ Company. Based on the projected cash budgets with the numbers we were given, the ending cash balance for January will be $55,169. XYZ Company has a note payable due the next day of $109,000. So we would have to have at least that amount, if not more, in the ending cash balance by changing the by changing the collection here the collection percentages or decreasing the payment percentages which would get us to the ending cash balance that we are looking for. And we have determined that XOC company needs to have at least $149,000 so that it could have $40,000 in excess cash for operations purposes. And so that approach that we're going to take is going to be the combination approach, which would increase cash collections and decrease cash disbursements, which is also the most conservative approach of the two. By doing this, they'll end up with $149,663.50 in their ending cash balance, which is $40,663 $40, above the note payable amount. And 
this concludes our project. Thank you for listening.